All right, guys, hello. I think it's Tuesday, am I right? And therefore, I do wish you have, uh, you had a great weekend and that you worked on my exam. And I mean worked and not posted my exam anywhere. Did I tell you that my probability students, my dear darling probability students, some of them did not listen to me. They thought this guy is not going to catch us. That was a big mistake. Uh, so there would be uh, one person that I will fail probability class for uh, uh, for cheating on my exam. I hope you in calculus do not intend to do that, especially that you know what will happen if you um, do that for the final exam. That's the worst. Right? So none of you are posting my questions anywhere, correct? You're working on them on your own. And if you find the questions difficult or you worry about something, you talk to me. And speaking of which, uh, you know, the other class wanted me to forget. I'm very forgetful with dates. Uh, forget that the due date is this Thursday. Do you want me to forget that the due date is Thursday and to give you another week to work on the exam? You don't seem overjoyed. Yes, good, wonderful. So apparently it's not due this week, but the next week on Thursday. Understood? If you have questions about this exam, uh, talk to me after class or other office hours if you're tired after this particular class. I can show you that those questions are not very difficult by, by solving something similar. Okay. Again, guys, we all remember that we're preparing not for those exams. This is just nonsense. We are preparing for the final exam, but even that is nonsense. We are preparing for what? For being smarter. Yes, hopefully, that's, that's, a, that's a small hope. It's not likely that anybody becomes smarter, just like I'm, you know, doing what I'm doing, I'm, I'm becoming smarter. I don't think so, but I try, at least I'm, I'm an optimist. So that's what we are doing here. And today, yes, well, here you go. Somebody understands what to do. Yes, you are all preparing for your forklift driver license. Did you um, uh, enlighten yourself about Münchhausen? You know who Münchhausen is now or Carlson? Yes? I hope you do guys, think about it. It's a good book, I mean, I showed you a link. Every child in Russia reads it, I think. Uh, and uh, there is Carlson, Astrid Lingard is a very good writer for children, but not only for them, read it. All right, and today guys, we are talking again about inverse functions. You all remember uh, this chit chat we had about inverse functions, correct? Just a little bit we spoke about it. Well, it's good, we could spread this video, I enjoy it. And, what, and Nicole, what did you then answer? What do we do in class? Exactly, right? It's called laughing because crying is, uh, it's, it's, it's already too tragic to cry. That's what you're doing for us. Yes, guys, so the idea of inverse is very familiar to you. You see it on my screen, you see? I mean, you don't see my screen. Uh, do you see the palette? You don't see the palette. Only I see the palette, correct? But if you want to annotate, right? You have uh, the garbage can, you have download, you have a bunch of arrows. We are talking about inverse functions. What icon do you think that you're very familiar with corresponds to this topic, please? Would you, would you write? Exactly. It is undo. Yes, guys, undo. So F inverse, what is that? Uh, what, what is F to, to the minus one? This means undo the application of F. That's why we have minus one. One less F. Do you understand what the minus one suggests? One less F, which is what you're hoping for in this class. Am I right? Now tell me guys, and I mean, read what it means. 
So I have here, let's say three to the power of minus one. My question is, what does this mean? Philosophically speaking, guys, three to the minus one. So Safa says two. Uh, so you're telling me that three to the minus one means two, maybe in some, in some, uh, uh, maybe you're already in abstract algebra. Yes, Aaron, undo three, but undo three by multiplication, at least, uh, at least for us. You see guys, we are not in abstract algebra and it means undo one instance of three in multiplication. So for instance, uh, if I have uh, three to the minus one applied to three to the four, that is simply three. I have multiplication of three, four times I undo one of them. So it's three to the power of three. Do you see that three to the minus one happens to be the number one third? I mean, you, you see why of course it's one third, correct guys? Because to undo a multiplication of three is the same as to multiply by a third. But the simple minus one means one less three. Yes? Now, if I have a composition of functions. So for example, guys, let's try to understand how a composition of function is supposed to work. And let's begin with a very simple example. And this example is, let's say X plus five. Okay, well, let's do X plus five here. Okay, so tell me please, what do you imagine this symbol to mean? F zero uh, of X. What is that? So guys, you see a lot of you say one, you have to understand guys, when I write, when I ask you what is stupendous, if I of course spell it correctly, am I, did I spell stupendous correctly? Yes. So when I say stupendous, you know the, what the word means? Well, hopefully it doesn't mean stupid, right? It means wonderful. So stupendous, you don't tell me S or U or the separate letters. You are trying to understand what this symbol together stands for before you even give answers. The same you do in mathematics, clear? So what is this symbol supposed to mean guys? F zero X, it just, it just tell me in words guys, I want you to write me a sentence. Everybody write me a short sentence and tell me what is F zero of X mean? What are you trying to command? Exactly, Christian. Or apply the function zero times to x. Don't apply the function. And what is x, guys? There is no x. Do you know what is x? X is the input. It's just a symbol, an abstract symbol for the input. You see? Means do not do anything to the input. Do not touch the input. Yes? So that means that the result is x. You understand what it means? In other words, don't do anything to, uh, to x. Now, suppose I ask you to do this. Please tell me what will I get? X to the power two. Uh, uh, no, careful, to all the, uh, I, I will explain why there is, there is uh, a sort of conflict of notation. So we will see in a moment. Yes, Aaron and Jeffrey, that's correct. Uh, Safa and uh, anybody who thinks it's X uh, plus five squared, there, you might be um, distracted by another notation. We will talk about it in a second. So here is the here is what we have, guys. Look at it. 
So this means the same as apply F to the input twice. So if you apply uh, the in, uh, F to the input once, what do you get? You get uh, the input plus five. Now that's my new input. So what do you get? You get uh, input plus five plus five, or let's record it as X plus twice times five. Are we clear? You might, of course, I will uh, mention why the confusion and we will hopefully um, erase it. Guys, it's, it's always, you see, I think what the symbols mean, right? And of course, if the meaning that uh, you ascribe to the symbols is different from somebody else, it's very easy to communicate that. It's not a problem, okay? That's, that should be the right symbol, yes? Now, if I apply F uh, three times to X, what will I get, please let me know? And you try to come up with a nice formula for what happens. Exactly. It's X plus three times five. You all see why, of course, yes? That's very nice. X uh, plus three to the five. Now, in general, guys, in general, if I take uh, F, n of x, what will I get? In other words, here I compose the function with itself n times. Exactly. So that means in this, in this particular instance, it's x plus n times 5 or 5n, however you like to write it. You understood what happened here, guys? And then look at it. Just like what you had, let's say you have uh, three squared times three to the power of four, ended up the same as basically, because here I multiply three by itself twice, times three by itself four times, altogether it's three, uh, two plus four. Now, what happens if I compose Fn and Fm in general uh, of x? For any, uh, for any function, not just for this particular uh, one, right? Uh, for, yeah, so it's three to the six, correct the order, but F to the N, F to the M compose at X for any one of them, it's uh, exactly Safa, exactly Sophia, and everybody here, correct, you see? So what you have, it's just the same as, as what is this describing, it means, uh, uh, this monster that was created when the function ate itself n times and then ate the function that ate itself m times, it's really the same function eating itself n plus m times. So it has the same exponential property that you saw before, correct guys? You all see that. So this is f n plus m x. Good. Do you see so? So there is this, that's why uh, we have the same symbol. That's why it's all very similar, yes? Now guys, uh, if our function is still that f of x equal to x plus five, would you tell me please, what do you think is f minus one of x? What's the formula for f minus one of x? The undo function. Okay, great Safa, that's exactly right. It's, uh, it's x minus five, or uh, as you, you, you already noticed the pattern, minus one x, yes? And then we can also have f minus three x. And what would that be? That would be x uh, plus minus three times, uh, that should be five, I'm sorry. It should be five, right? Yeah? Because to undo three, uh, three additions of five, I need to subtract uh, uh, five, uh, three times five, you agree? For this function, it is, of course, not very difficult to come up with. When you compose, when you feed one function into another, it's not very difficult to come up with formulas for, the, for those very easy cases. Good? So let's practice uh, with, so guys, you all understand what is invertibility. Invertibility is the ability to undo. So F inverse is the function uh, that when composed with F when, when you uh, engage the machinery uh, one after the other, either first F and then F inverse or first F inverse and then F, 
they cancel each other out, you get what you started with. Right? So, so for instance, uh, observe what happens here, guys. So I, I can state, uh, here, is my, uh, here are my drinks. You see, for, for this soda machine, I have buttons one through four, and I have beverages, which are Coca-Cola, Pepsi, water, and Sprite. I especially miss uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. As my brother says, I have dyspepsia. I haven't been drinking Pepsi for two weeks already. Addicted. Instead, I have to, uh, I'm drinking some, some disgusting water. You know, that's what you're seeing me drinking. Yes. So, Tell me guys, uh, in this, look at it, what happens here. So the number one is processed and becomes Coca-Cola and the inverse function processes Coca-Cola and makes it into one. So do you see what happens? Do you see that in this function, if I take F, if I have F inverse of X, then I will get X. And if I take F inverse of F of X, then I get also X, they cancel each other out. Now, if you comprehend what I'm saying, guys, you see what this means? This, this means that first, look at it. First, I feed the input into the inverse function and then I apply F. Yes, that's my first line. So if you are comprehending, guys, you will let me know what is this X? What type of X is there? You see, X is just a symbol, but uh, what are uh, the things that, you, that are not processed? What are those Xs in this particular example? They are what? Well, yes, X is always the input, but what is the input, right? Imagine you're working in that factory. That's why I remember that uh, uh, Stapel uh, Klaus, right? Because, uh, you know, if you're working in a factory, you probably want to know what you put into the machinery, right? You don't shove in your hands. So I'm asking you, what do you shove in, into the machine, into the, uh, into the processor? You see, that's why I thought of that uh, video specifically. I just imagine you just go like this into a grinder. What is X in the first example? We have a soda machine, right? X refers to what objects? What do you put into the machine? Sodas, thank you. You put these into the machine and F inverse takes this into the machine. This is water apparently, right? And what does it do to water? F inverse will take water and give you what for it? For water, it will give you a what, please? Just the function F inverse. Th three, yes. For water, you get three. And then you plug in three into the vending machine and what do you get? You get this thing back. Do you understand? So the, the fact that F of F inverse is equal to X, that just means that what you put in is what you get out. The same thing. Uh, at the end of this process, it's a useless machine. You've seen useless machines on YouTube, right? So you start something and the machine is uh, doing some work, but at the end you just get nothing. You get the same thing that you put into the machine, yes? So this means that the X here is soda. What I, the input is soda. And please tell me what is the input in here? It is what? What is the X in this? It has a very different meaning. The X in here is numbers, coins or whatever you put into the vending machine. I mean, no, I mean, in this case, I mean, I, it's a free machine. It's a Soviet machine where you press a button and uh, just like that, you get your drink. So this is number. Clear? Yes, clear. Okay, so it's again, all of those things are just statements, guys. That's all they are. So inverse function is just canceling uh, the action of another function. It's a relative thing, what, which they're just inverses of one another to be precise. And when can an inverse not exist is, for instance, in this situation, you can see that number one and number two produce Coca-Cola. 
So I cannot define an inverse function on C, for instance, because I do not know if I should give you one as the output or the number two as the output. Good? Wonderful. And now you all understand why F inverse of X is not one over X, because this just means undo the function. Usually you don't undo the function by uh, taking the reciprocal. Yes? Now, you might, of course, be bothered by, uh, and that's why some of you said something else. For instance, if I say something like sine 2x, this means sine x squared. You agree? That is because there is a conflict of notation. So for, with trigonometry, this notation uh, stuck, and that means square the function. It should have meant should have meant uh, sine of sine x. But uh, so, so sometimes uh, to distinguish you, uh, you write something like this. Sometimes to be sure that you distinguish, you write something like this. So you write a circle and n to be sure that everybody understands that what you mean is function composition. But usually the context makes it clear what's required. Good guys. Now, Function composition, uh, I'm not sure how you see function composition guys creates a lot of very, very complicated problems, terrible problems. Things that uh, can, for some of you determine uh, whether you sleep or not, or how good you sleep. So for instance, uh, this, this guys, uh, uh, those, those images, are generated by repeatedly composing functions. So you take a function and you feed it to itself, you feed it to itself, you feed it to itself, and you try to predict the destiny of points, where do they move? So for instance, in this picture, everything that's blue uh, is having the same destiny. If you are in any region where it's white or near the containing region where it's white, then uh, your destiny is extremely scattered. Your, uh, and, and, and let me try to explain in case you're curious, uh, what is that uh, destiny that I talk about? Let me give you a very simple example. Okay, what are those things? So imagine, imagine the type of shape that would be generated if I take the quadratic function and we'll just do it for the real number line. We don't use complex numbers here but just for the real number line. So imagine you have a bunch of points. Here is zero, here is the point one, here is the point minus one. And uh, we are going to move them by the function f of x equal to x squared. Yes? Uh, by moving them, it means this. You see, I take, for instance, I take the number, uh, the number t, and then the next place it moves is I apply f to it. So t is going to move to what position? t will move to what position if the function is x squared? So some point t will move to the position, right, in the comments. Because I apply to tf, it will move to t squared. And where will t squared move if I apply f to it again? So where would t square move if I apply f to it again? Yes, so it would be, look at it. So it would be t squared, the function is squaring it. So t squared squared, which is t uh, to the power of two squared. I will write it as two to the squared. You can say four, but I will write it as t to the power of two squared. And where will that move, please? t to the eight, very good. So that would be the square of that. So it would be t to the power of three, of two to the three. So t to the power of two to the three and so on and so forth, right? So in the behavior of, the, of this dynamic, because I even can find the formula, it's very simple. So for instance, let's try to understand what happens to zero guys. Where will zero walk? So zero, if I start at zero, let's, uh, let's color it, um, 
let's color it um, black. I start at zero. What will happen if I apply the function at zero? Well, zero squared is zero. Zero squared is zero, so zero will never move anywhere. Under this dynamic, zero is, is a fixed point. It doesn't move anywhere. You agree? Now, where what happens to one? One doesn't move anywhere either. Yes? You see what's happening? Now, what will happen to minus one if you carry this dynamic? Would anybody like to tell me what happens to minus one? It will move to one and then stay there. Yes? So minus one will move to one and its destiny, it's sucked to, uh, to, the, uh, to one, you understand? It's just sucked to one and it cannot go away from one, okay? Now, what do you think will happen to any point T that begins here? Any point uh, T that begins here, where do you think it will go? Uh, so it's limited to one, yes. Yeah. So if this t, and I mean, you consider to you consider applying this function again and again and again, so it will be walking, right? So if I start t here, where do you think it will run? Any point uh, bigger than one, it will run to infinity. Do you see that? It because you apply again, you stay, you apply, you just this this uh, x squared is like the weather for this function. You understand? It is like the weather for this function. In other words, it, it's like the particle is pushed and you just consider it discreetly pushed. So apply one function, it's moving somewhere. Apply another function, it's moving somewhere else, yes? So it's moving one step at a time, but you consider where it goes, to, what, what is the destiny of this point, okay? So the, this point and every point that is bigger than one, its destiny is to go to infinity, do you agree? And equally, every point that begins in here, it will first uh, jump here and then move to infinity, do you agree? So all this region, its destiny is infinity. And this region, its destiny, its destiny is infinity. What happens if I select a point uh, in here? Let's say use uh, green. If I select a point in here, any point in here, what do you think is going to be its destiny? Zero, exactly, right? So you see this, uh, this Destiny, it's gonna suck it to zero. Anything in here, it's sucked to zero. So this region, it's uh, sucking, it's like a black hole. It's sucking everything into zero. Good? You understand? So that's, this has to do with just function composition. It's a sort of segue, but I hope uh, not a boring one for you, not entirely boring. And, uh, and I'm showing you uh, my affliction my nightmares and whatnot, right? So uh, it's like me, me complaining because I have a lot of problems and uh, you can even see the art that I, that I consider, right? So for instance, let's see if you have, uh, maybe let's see the two cycles, this thing. So you see this shape? So uh, the black one means it's a black hole. You cannot escape. The blue region here is, uh, is it's escaping to infinity. Everything colored in blue, escaping to infinity. Now what is, look how complicated is this pattern. The, so just let me, you saw that the pattern for X squared, basically you want to predict the destiny for X squared. It's a very, very simple de destiny pattern. Everything bigger than one floats. Uh, to infinity, everything smaller than minus one flows to infinity, everything between minus one and one goes to zero. So it's very, very easy to understand this function, but making the slightest change, let me show you one last thing about it, making the slightest change, like for instance, uh, Julia, Okay, let's see what's from alpha. The 
This is just x squared minus one, guys. You see, just a small uh, change for x squared uh, uh, minus one. I don't know. It's, it's, it, draw, it draws the wrong picture, but uh, the point is the picture is uh, is very complicated. Yes. The hell is wrong with this thing? It worked. Your second, Julia. No, they changed it. Julia said. Well, this is the Mandelbrot set, but whatever, anyhow. So uh, I can generate you pictures of that, but I don't have the software on this particular computer. Anyhow, so uh, sorry for that, guys. I don't know why uh, it happens, but uh, uh, whatever. That's a sort of segue. I just, uh, my, the point is there are a lot of very complicated issues with, uh, with even composition of functions. It's, it's right away and very quickly uh, a hard topic. For us, of course, it's much simpler, guys. Very quickly, we have f of x equal to 3x, okay? I want you to calculate f4 of x, please. f of x is 3x. I want you to tell me what is f4 of x. f4 of x, guys, and be careful. Be very careful. Strange on my phone, it finds the right picture. Here is that. Here is the way x uh, squared minus one will look like. That's the dynamics. Whatever is black is uh, sucked into uh, minus one and zero. So it's very very complicated. All right, three to the four or 81, Abraham, good. That's correct. You understand why, guys. I'm, I'm gonna go through that fast so that you will solve inverse functions. We have, a, we have six of them to solve later. This one is easy, right? So compose the function uh, four times with itself. It means what? It means uh, just uh, uh, eat, the, eat three X uh, four times. Each time the, the three X is eaten, you multiply by three, right? So it's uh, the same as, uh, four times it means multiply this means just multiply by three four times so it's three to the power of four yes this this means multiply the input by three then what do you do here you multiply by three four times which gives you three to the four what is f inverse of x please Yes, uh, just write parentheses around one third, guys, because uh, what you can, what you write, I mean, doesn't matter here, but you understand that uh, the computer or uh, grammatically it might be interpreted as one divided by uh, 3x. Good. Or x over 3. Good. This is clear. And this means what? This means undo 
one action of the minus one means uh, one less action by f. That's why we have the minus one power, yes? And now can you calculate this? Uh, lastly, guys, what is f minus three of x? Be careful, guys, x minus three of x. F, F, F minus three of X, we undo three multiplications. So it's one over 27 X, correct? You see why guys? So here is just the inverse. Uh, so to, un to undo three versions of F, we need to compose F inverse with itself uh, three times. So it's X over three composed three times with itself. Somebody in the morning uh, actually asked me a um, somewhat of a not bad question. I liked it. Asked me, is there a meaning to powers that are not integers? So let's say we have uh, f of three, f of minus one, f of zero, but what about, let's say, f uh, of uh, one fifth? Would that be meaningful? Yes, I cannot think of any meaning to it. Uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, that it's not uh, by thinking this way you can make discoveries sometimes you see guys if you notice something that is, here is what you have now can you notice something else can you give interpretation to other symbols sometimes that gives you uh, very impressive discoveries all right guys and now it's your turn are you ready um, now how do we compute i'm gonna we're going to do number eight to eight, number eight together and not because it's difficult, just be, you know, not, not because it's difficult, but just to illustrate some procedure. Guys, do you remember studying inverse functions in school, in your high school? You did, right? I bet you did. I know some people even took calculus. Now, what uh, did they tell you to do in, in your school? So they told you to do this. They told you, okay, well, we can say why equal to 5x plus 8 and then they say swap the variables they say swap the variables so they would say ah that means x equal to 5y plus 8 so they would say this is first step second step third step they would say solve for y yes now why is that procedure working? What, what is truly happening? Is there swapping of variables? Here is what truly happens, guys. So I can say, let y be equal to f inverse x. And the reason I, I uh, say y equal to it is just because writing f inverse of x is, is tedious. It's a lot of symbols. You see, writing one symbol instead of several, it's much easier much easier, it might occupy much less space, economical in the mind and on the paper. Do you understand? It's just for economy that I don't want to write, look how many symbols, here is F, there is the minus, there is the one, there are two parentheses, and then there is the X, instead of writing just Y. So it's just this. Now tell me please guys, if there is an inverse of the function, what should be the result of uh, calculating F of Y please? That should be what? What should be F of Y? Type in the comments if you understand. Why one over five X plus eight up? I'm not sure I understand. I don't ask you to solve for the inverse guys. I just asked you what should that be equal to? Uh, not even for this problem, but for all problems. If I take f of y, where y is f inverse, what should be the result? Exactly, the result should be x, guys. You see, you're all right away solving the problem. Stop solving again. How many times am I telling you guys? Right? It's like I'm telling you, don't shove your hand into the grinder, but you just go, right? Stop for a second, think, and ask yourself, what is it that you're doing? What's the process? No, we don't care about this particular function. What's the process? If I apply f and f in, this is what? This is simply f with f inverse. They will cancel each other out. So the result should be x. Do you understand? The result is x, which means what? But, but what does this, this particular function do to, uh, to the input? So what is, does f of y do to the input? So we have x 
equal to f of y. Wonderful. But what f does to anything it eats? Anything it eats is multiplied by 5, and you add 8 to it. Do you see that? Here is the reason for swapping. You see, the, swap, the result looks like you swapped something. But uh, swapping is just a way to make uh, you carry out an operation without understanding. What happens is very simply, you use y to denote the inverse function. Plugging it into the original function should undo the operation. And therefore, you get back the input. You see, you get back this thing. But plugging uh, this uh, anything into f uh, is, 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 is applying the formula of f to that anything. So that's what we have here. And so now I can solve for y. Now, what is this y? This y is equal to x minus 8 over 5. Yes, correct. It is equal to x minus 8 over 5, but that's one particular example. Good. Now go ahead, guys, and solve. And again, solve my way, because uh, so you understand why that works. Solve b. What's the answer to b now? And by the way, guys, uh, why I see so few people? Where are the others? Where, uh, where are your pretty faces? Turn on the cameras. Let's not be bored. What is x? x what? x is the inverse of 1 over x. What's the inverse of this function? Exactly. The answer is one over X. It, it, it's the function itself. You see why guys, because if I say X equal to one over Y, then taking the reciprocals one over X is Y. So it's uh, the function is, is uh, canceling itself. It's its own inverse. You understand? A quick comprehension check, guys. If I say uh, this, k of x is equal to x, what does the function do? What does it do? Like imagine I come, great Scots, like uh, if you watch the movie, and I show you this function that I invented. Are you impressed? What does it do? Exactly. Just like me, the function does nothing whatsoever. Nothing. You understand? All right, uh, back to this work, guys. Take the inverse of five over x minus one. Please do that fast.
right, cool. Make sure to write your parentheses where they belong. All right, ready guys? So how do we solve this one? So So when we set x equal to 5 over y minus 1. I hope you are you understand why that what is meant by that, right? The y is the inverse function. When I plug it into the processing of the function f, I should get x. You all understand that? So then I can take x over five is equal to one over y minus one. Taking the reciprocals gives me five over x equals y minus one. And so y equals to five over x plus one, which if you want to, you can write as five plus x over x up to you. Good. All right, guys, now uh, very quickly, D should be immediate to you, right? What's the inverse of X cubed? The cube root of X, correct? That's just too easy. This is too easy. Now work on E. What's the inverse of X minus one over X plus one? E.
We are, you can do both of them if you finish with E, but we're working on E naturally. This seems to take a bit longer. Huh? Okay, thank you, Moshe, John. We'll see in a moment. Thank you, Nicole. All right, let's do it together, I suppose. There is also a very quick way to do that, although in the morning um, my brain mal malfunctioned. So let's do it first slowly. So we have that x is equal to y minus one over y plus one. My goal is to solve for y. So I'm gonna multiply uh, the denominator, uh, both by, by denominator of both sides of the equation. And what do I get? I get x, y plus x equal to y minus one. I want to group together the y. So I, I move this y across and I have x minus one times y is equal to minus x minus one and so y is equal to minus x minus one over x minus one yes which you can of course uh, you can decide to write as if you multiply top and bottom by minus one you can write it as one minus x on the bottom and as uh, a one plus x on the top yes Now guys, final question, do number F.
Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, thank you. All right, are we ready guys? Let's go see what's the result. So this time I, I show you a slightly different strategy, even though what, what I did before works. Okay, it's very, very similar problem. So first here I have y to the five minus two and here I have y to the five minus seven. What would I like to have in the numerator? Wishful thinking, guys. What would I like to have in the numerator? Yes, minus seven. Do you see why? Because if I had minus seven, I would cross it to one. So what I do is I, I write in my blue parenthesis my wish. It's y to the five minus seven. But if you have this wish, you have to pay for it because it was uh, minus two here. So it's minus seven plus five. And then, then I take the denominator divide here and here. So it's one plus five over y to the five minus seven. What did this accomplish? I used to have two versions of y, two copies of y, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. Now I have only one. Yes, guys, you see, I have y something to, on the top and y something on the bottom. Doing this eliminates uh, one of the y's. So what do we have here? We have one plus five over y to the fifth minus seven. And then I subtract one from x and take reciprocals, you see? So it's uh, one over x minus one is y to the five minus seven over five. And so what do we have then? Then we have uh, y to the five minus seven is five over x minus one or y to the five is five over x minus seven plus seven. And then I uh, group them together. So y to the five is five plus seven x minus one. So when I uh, simplify, it becomes seven uh, X minus two. Yes, seven X uh, minus two over X minus uh, one. Yeah, and then I take the fifth root. Good. All right, so there is, by the way, for that question, there, there, there are quicker ways to find the inverse, but uh, I will not uh, take the segue. Now guys, one thing that I find interesting about mathematics is it tries to train you to see uh, things from a different perspective, which by the way, if you are prepared for my rant, brings me to the topic that, uh, I, I'm reading the Old Testament. Yes, the Old Testament uh, comparing Hebrew and English. In case anybody here is interested in discussing such things, you are welcome to join. Where is Abraham? He disappeared. I find it very interesting, for instance, uh, that 
in the Old Testament, the promise of eternal life is not like the promise of eternal life that people uh, think about. It is, uh, it is the promise uh, of the continuity of the group. Exactly, where is Abraham? Right? It's the promise of the continuity of the group. Yes? Uh-huh. So, uh, so Abraham is not uh, said that he's going to heaven. It just says that when he's dead, he will be gathered to his uh, forefathers. And um, yes, and, and, and the promise is that through children, through, uh, through his seed, he will be a great people. And not one people, nation, but actually many nations. So uh, now let's see if we, sorry for that rant, just uh, in case anybody likes um, to discuss some of those things, it's, it's my 30 minute hobby right now. I'm already up to, up to Shmot or Exodus. So here is the same thing guys, change of perspective um, in mathematics. Now let's talk about another thing I watched uh, today in the morning. It was about Russian cosmonauts. Yes, and um, now this is, guys, the situation of what would happen to you if you were walking in space, okay? So this is a curve. And uh, one cosmonaut is walking along this axis, another cosmonaut is walking along the other axis, it's perfectly fine, there is no gravity, there is no sense of up or down. Yes, it's a matter of perspective, it just happens that you agree with this cosmonaut that this line is horizontal and you disagree with this cosmonaut that this line is vertical. Yes? Now let's try to, uh, now let's try to have them talk, guys. Here is, actually let me, let me do it nicely. Here is uh, a graph very familiar to you. This graph is y equal to x squared. At least uh, that's how uh, this particular cosmonaut, this cosmonaut staring at it, um, being at position X, this is what he reports. Now another cosmonaut is uh, walking here. And the question is what, the, what does he think the graph is? So he is in position Y and what does he think? So can you tell me? He thinks uh, he is walking on what? Okay, right, let's see. Guys, first of all, let's again examine what does it mean y equals x squared? I'm saying this is the graph y equals x squared. What is the y? What is equal uh, to x squared, right? Let's agree that, uh, that this axis is the x-axis and this axis is the y-axis. What does it mean that y equals x squared, please? Thank you, Alessandra. This means, guys, what does it mean? It means that what he's really observing is saying uh, x, x squared. In words, he is saying uh, the altitude is always the square of, um, of latitude or whatever you call this uh, thing. I'm not sure if you call it latitude or, you know, whatever you like to call this, uh, this position, you see? Y equals X squared is just a code for saying that the second coordinate, the altitude for this uh, person, as he observes, it's always the square of the, uh, of, of where he's standing, of the X position where he's standing, yes? And uh, one person did say, what about this guy? He sees the same exact thing and what, what is he going to see, guys? is going to see what? Because for him, y is the horizontal. So he is going to describe 
uh, his position as what? Please type in the comments, more people. Well, I mean, keeping the same, uh, they agree on the same axis and they, let's say they put it in the second position so that we communicate it uh, the same way. So what he sees, he sees X is, X is his vertical is equal to the square root of Y. This is what I mean, guys, uh, uh, a change of perspective. Can you see something that is not yours? Can you see something, can you think in a way that somebody else thinks? This is a special version of it. And I think it's very dangerous when you cannot do that. Right? I, I find a lot of people that live here, they are not capable of comprehending people from other places. Do you see why that is the case, guys? Uh, for me, it's like talking, my brother likes to mock me, it's like talking in the passive tense. So I usually don't like to say, you will do the exam. I say, the exam will be done by you, right? So I view you from the perspective of the exam. Yes? Similarly, in this situation, what's happening here, guys? Look at it. If the second coordinate is the square of the first, it must mean that the first coordinate is the square root of the second. Do you agree? It's just uh, like a passive tense. It's just like, uh, um, <laughs> right? Square root, it must, what is the square root? It means that this, the first coordinate must be squared to uh, get the second coordinate. You have to kind of, let's see if you can try to get into that mind frame. It's very useful, guys, because if you can, then uh, an object viewed from different positions, from different perspectives, looks to you like the same object. So, let's see. What happens in general, guys? In general, if I have uh, x, f of x is, is one way to view the graph, right? That is to say y is equal to f of x. If the function is invertible, invertible, right? So that means that I apply F inverse to both sides. Then I see F inverse Y equals to F inverse F of X, which is equal to X. They describe exactly the same set of points. You agree? What is that uh, saying, guys? It's saying that uh, the an uh, inverse image and, uh, and the function, the, the graph of the function and the graph of the inverse fun uh, function are one and the same. They are the same picture, but just viewed from a different point of view. Do you follow? So for instance, uh, here guys, you stare at the picture this way. And you see y equals x squared. But if you twist it around, turn it around, you will see this picture. And that, is, uh, in the, and that is the root function. You see, this is the basically, without using symbols, the square function, and this is the root function. It's the, the same curve, but viewed differently from a different perspective. Let me try to show you some more of it, okay? This is the situation, guys, you see? So uh, this guy views the function f, 
That means this guy uh, at, at position y, he sees, uh, he sees kind of f inverse x, f inverse y, y. So he's seeing the graph of the inverse function. Which means what? Which means uh, the, only, the only thing, the only reason you don't present the picture in the same way, guys, is because you like to see the uh, input to be horizontal with respect to your perspective. Right, and the output to be vertical. So, what do we need to do with the, with the image to switch that? You see, so this is the curve. I want uh, where you see the red dot. I want it to be horizontal. So first, I might rotate it clockwise by ninety degrees. You see, I rotate it clockwise by ninety degrees. Now the vertical line now points to the right. But the problem is that the horizontal line it's not pointing up. It's pointing down. So this is up up is down here. So all I have to now do is flip the picture, take this, this uh, two dimensional piece of paper and flip it on itself. And uh, now I have the graph of the inverse. If this were was the function, this is the graph of the inverse. It is exactly the same curve. There is no difference between, you see, I, I'm, I'm just uh, taking this piece of paper and I'm inverting it. Like you see my face, at least uh, I, I think it's inverted, correct? I forget, I mean, is it inverted or is it, uh, is it right? But one or, one or the other, right? So it's, it, it, this is exactly what's, what's happening here. It's just an inverted picture, but of the same curve. So this curve geometrically has all the same properties. All you did is just this. You understand? You just uh, turned around or reflected, but you haven't really changed anything about the shape of the curve. It's very, very important, guys. Do you understand? Uh, kind of, uh, but first, do, do you understand my explanation so far? It might be kind of over your head and that's what, what I'm afraid of. I'm trying to tell you guys that root of x and x squared are from a point of view of geometry the same function. They have the same properties because the graphs are the same. The graph of root of x and the graph of x squared are the same. Then uh, you would see that the logarithm is the same as the exponential function. It's the same shape of the graph, the same curve. You understand? If they have the same curve, that means that uh, those functions are just uh, describing two sides of the same object. Do you see that? You can, by the way, accomplish this transition of making y horizontal and x vertical in one motion, and that is a reflection in the line y equals x. Why that line? Look at it. You see, it, it, it builds uh, 90 degrees with respect to y. It's a 45 degree here. When you rotate, the blue, uh, the red or red line becomes the blue line, the blue line becomes the red line. You see there is symmetry, you can see there are kind of this part is folded uh, onto this part, see? Yeah, so this point goes to this point, uh, it's all, it flips it right away and it makes the X axis vertical and pointing up and it makes the Y axis horizontal and pointing to the right. So it gives you the standard presentation for where Y would be horizontal. Are you with me guys? Do you, so uh, an important point guys, do you see that, uh, that the graph of the inverse is the same as the graph of uh, the original function? And I see that by formulas because y equals f of x, if the function is invertible, it means because it's a, it's the same statement f inverse y is equal to uh, x. You understand? So that means that if you view the curve uh, y equals x, if you view it where x is horizontal, you see f of x. But if you view it where y is horizontal, you see f inverse. Do you follow? So here is a discussion of astronauts. Let's try to see this picture, guys. So here, uh, the two astronauts are communicating and they are trying to determine um, to determine this is how this is useful for instance for differentiation right so suppose that we do not know how to take the derivative of root of x and if you actually look at it carefully we haven't uh, in many cases even established that root of x is continuous we haven't done many things right if you are rigorous about it we just came up with, uh, with, this, uh, with this idea, guys. We, we established, we try to be careful about it. 
we established that x cubed, let's say the derivative of that is, uh, is 3x squared. We did establish that, but have we established that the cube root of x, its derivative is one third x to the power of uh, one third minus one? We haven't, we just said that you can use the formula, but how do you know this is true? Now from the geometric perspective, it's obvious why. Okay, let me show you how you can see why it's true. Because x to the one third and x cubed are the same curve. And therefore, if x cubed is differentiable, then what does it mean? x cubed differentiable means the curve, uh, when you look at anywhere very closely, it looks like a straight line. And the derivative is just the slope of that straight line. Yes? So if it looks like a straight line, you can just uh, describe the slope for, uh, for, the, for the one perspective, and you can then easily describe the slope for looking at the same curve from a different perspective. Let me try to explain to you what I mean. This is a bit difficult, so bear with me. Guys, here is this, ast uh, this astronaut is having a problem. So he's walking along uh, this line. For him, y-axis is horizontal, you see? He looks up, for him, x-axis is up. Can you, can you put yourself in the shoes of that astronaut? Or, I'm sorry, of that cosmonaut? Yes? Can you put yourself in his shoes? All right, if you can, let me just check. I, I mean, you're claiming you can put yourself in this person's shoes. I'm gonna check it right now. What is he seeing? So this guy is saying, is saying hello, yes, it is, he's talking to this guy. What are you seeing? He's saying, oh, y equals uh, x squared. This guy is seeing what? Which function is he seeing? Yes, x equal to square root of, uh, let's keep the same, so we are not confused. Let's say that they see that the axis that to us looks horizontal is x, and the axis that to us looks vertical is y. But you understand, guys, it, it, it's only perspective. I'm sitting like this. If I decide to lie on the side, this would be my horizontal. And in space, there is no gravity to make me imagine that there is a down. You see, when you put your head on the side, you feel pressure in here, but uh, that's only due to gravity. Yes, there is up and down is a very, very kind of weird thing. Good guys, so this is, uh, so this guy is, is looking at uh, this curve and he's seeing, uh, and, he's, and he wants to understand what is the derivative uh, for, from his perspective. What is the derivative from his perspective? And so he asks for help of that guy. So this guy says, oh, the curve I'm seeing is y equals x squared. And I'm standing over the point three and you see they're kind of matching. The point three, uh, three squared is nine. So this guy is standing on the point nine. He makes this guy stand on the point of root nine, which is three. And this guy is looking up and says, oh, I see the slope. The slope is uh, at three is dy dx equals to to what? It's, it's x squared, so it's two times three, which is, uh, which is what? Two times three, which is six. You agree? So he says the slope is six, and he, he calls this guy, and he says, I see slope six. So this guy on the phone that was confused, now it says, oh, I, now I know what slope I'm seeing. Now help him, and help, if, you, if you see the same thing as he does, tell me what slope is he seeing? So he, he looks at the same line and he's seeing what slope. You just claim that you see, the, you understand this perspective.
right guys are you ready i mean i, I maybe two people see this what about the rest of you now let's see look let's look at it yes now you see what is this dy for this guy on the x-axis the red line dy is vertical and dx is horizontal so dy dx is six but for this guy he's looking at the same line but he has a different notion of vertical and horizontal you see what i'm saying he has a, he thinks that horizontal is dy and vertical is dx All right so for him for this guy, it is simply dx over dy, which is the same as one over dy dx, which is the same as one over six. So by uh, communicating, they were able to very quickly figure out a formula for the derivative of the inverse function. Do you see that? Because the inverse function was the same curve. It was really not, not very different. The reason we have a different number is only because when we look at it, we have a different notion of horizontal or vertical, so our slope looks different. But a slope is not intrinsic property of the line. You see, guys, what slope is of this line? Depends how you look at it. If you, if I, if I am turning my head this way, it now has it now has slope zero, because if if my eyes are my x-axis or if my eyes are my horizontal line, then this is zero. You understand? Geometrically, slope is not the most significant thing. It's just a communication of your perspective. Now let's let's uh, do an exercise together, guys. You're going to come up geometrically with the derivative formula for root of uh, a function, okay? And we, I will help you with that, okay? So suppose that uh, that we have uh, we are going to help this cosmonaut figure out the derivative of of a root function. This is the way it works. So this curve has coordinates uh, x, x squared, but also coordinates uh, a root of y, y, agreed? Same, uh, same exact curve, root of y, y. The, we, I can either say second coordinate is the square of the first coordinate, or I can say that first coordinate is the square root of the second coordinate. Same thing, just a different uh, perspective. I can speak uh, from the point of your first coordinate, and I can speak from the point of view of second coordinate. Yes? Now, uh, this is this thing, guys, and uh, the astronaut that sees root of y, is uh, walking along uh, this position and in general has position y okay now how is he going to figure uh, this uh, slope so here is uh, he wants to he sees that when you zoom in at this point you are seeing this line yes This is dx, this is dy, okay? And he is going to calculate the slope because in this form x squared, it's much easier. So he's going to use the assistance of his colleague who is walking on the x-axis. If this is y, then uh, the corresponding point where he would like uh, his body to stand is here. Do you agree? And that point is, uh, That point here is what? If this is y, then that point here is, please, what is that point? What is this point? In terms of uh, y, of course, I mean, because this is, I'm standing at y. How would this guy locate the corresponding point of where he should stand? If this is y, then look at it, uh, he should go to the, uh, he, he, this guy says, I am standing at the point y. So this guy should go to the point which is root of y. Do you agree? Because if the guy on the vertical axis standing, uh, I say, I'm standing at nine, where should the, the horizontal guy go to? To three. You should take the square root of that coordinate, yes? Are you with me? 
it's somewhat complicated, but that's only because it's very difficult to understand another perspective. This is root of y. Do you agree? So now this guy is standing at root of y and the derivative uh, for this guy is very similar to the derivative at root of y uh, for the function x squared. Now, do you see what's the derivative uh, for the function x squared? So I see that uh, the derivative at root y would be what? The derivative at y would be from the perspective of this guy, he reports the slope. You see this guy in purple, he says, oh, now I have this formula, I have the x squared formula. So I know the slope is two times root y. For the, the slope uh, of the point that you are interested in from the perspective of the guy on the x-axis is two root y. Are you with me? Now he communicates uh, this information to this guy in red. So this guy now says, okay, now I know my slope. So he would say that his slope is what, please? You understand the back and forth communication guys, right? So uh, from the point of view of the guy walking on the Y axis, the, the, the curve is unfamiliar. We're gonna do that in a moment with functions that we're not familiar with. You are gonna help me. Right? I mean, maybe you think you know the derivative of root of uh, Y, but I don't believe you do. I think you memorized it. Now here is, uh, you walk along the y-axis, this guy walks along the y-axis, he's looking at this curve, but it, it is from an unfamiliar perspective. Have you ever tried to walk home through a snow, through like, like Jack London's hero, through a lot of snow? Even if it's a familiar neighborhood, it looks, uh, it looks difficult. It's hard to find your way. So he is using assistance similarly, right? He, this perspective is unfamiliar to him. So he's saying, okay, I'm on this axis, I want your assistance. So if I'm at y, then you are at root y. Can you calculate the slope for, for me from your perspective? The slope, this guy is saying is two root y. The pink guy is saying your, the slope, the slope that you are seeing from my perspective, the slope is two root y. What is the slope from the perspective of the red guy? Same point, look at it. Two root y, what does he think the slope is? Yes, it's very simply the reciprocal one over two root y. And what did you obtain? You now see that the derivative with respect to y of root y is one over two root y. You obtained the formula for the derivative of uh, square roots. Do you agree? You recognize it? Would you like, uh, to, uh, do you fancy to try a question like this? Uh, now, the logarithm is, um, you remember ln is the natural logarithm. We don't know how to take the derivative of the natural logarithm. You, you agree with me? But we do know how to take the derivative of e to the x, correct? So look at it guys. So uh, we see that for instance, if f of x is equal to e to the x, then uh, f inverse of x is equal to log base e of x, which is ln x. Do you agree? Because uh, e to the power, why do I know that? Because uh, look at it. Uh, first of all, I see that e to the power of uh, ln x, it's just x. Because if I raise e to the power that e needs to be raised to get x, I get this x. Yes? So let's see guys, if you are capable of understanding this. It's a bit hard, I know, but this is the inverse function, okay? I want you to try, and I'm gonna give you five minutes and afterwards I will take five minutes to explain it if you decide to stay with me, right? I want you to uh, figure out the derivative of ln x. So, so you can use uh, something like this. I would even tell you, figure out what's dy of ln y derivative with respect to y of ln y. And I will start you up with this thing, okay? Ln y guys, it's the same graph of as e to the x. So it means 
look at the graph of e to the x for inspiration. This is the astronaut story. So this is x, e to the x graph, but it's also the graph of y, ln y, because it's the inverse function, do you agree? Which means that uh, uh, the function that you want to differentiate here, it is, uh, it is just, the it's just a perspective on e to the x of uh, the person walking here. All right, so now please go ahead. So the person walking here is viewing this point and he's seeing this tangent line. And now he's, he's asking for assistance from uh, the green person on the x-axis. So for that, you first need to tell me what is this point? What is this point? All right, guys, what is this point? Help me, please. This green point here is what? You understand that for, uh, in terms of this, this guy is saying, I need uh, the slope at y. And this guy says, sure thing. And where does he go? In terms of y. L and y. Wonderful. Are you with me, guys? He goes to L and y. We will actually, afterwards, I'll show you some other way to calculate the same idea. But I want you to train your imagination. It's not just uh, to calculate the inverse. It's for many other purposes. So this position is a ln of y. Okay, now this guy calculates the derivative at the point ln y. What is he gonna tell this other guy? So he says, oh, uh, the derivative at ln y. So he's saying, uh-huh. The, der the derivative that you're seeking from my point of view uh, is, is what? So from his point of view, it's dy over dx. And from his point of view, the answer is what? What's the derivative at this point? Well, Safa, you're, go you're going ahead uh, maybe, right? I, I want it in terms of y. Okay, great. dy dx, guys, is uh, simply what? Uh, it's, so this guy is uh, seeing from his point of view, he's saying, oh, the slope that I see here is e to the power of ln y, do you agree? Because the derivative of the, uh, this is just ln y is just a point. So the derivative uh, of an exponential is the exponential at that point. The derivative at every point is e at that point. Do you agree? But e to the power of ln y is just y. So he says, oh, the slope I'm seeing here is just your, it has the same slope as your coordinate. Are you with me? And so what happens if this is the same slope as, the, as your coordinate? Then this guy says, oh, then I know the slope. The red guy now says, uh-huh. So the slope is uh, d dy uh, ln y equal to one over that answer. Because why one, guys? One over because it, it, the vertical guy has the notions of horizontal and vertical reversed. Do you agree? The y guy thinks that the y-axis is horizontal. And the x-axis uh, is, ver is vertical. So he sees, he sees this. This guy says dx dy. So he reports dy over dx. But for this guy, uh, the slope is dx over dy, which is uh, the reciprocal. It's one over the slope of the horizontal guy. Do you see how by communication you can calculate the slope? You can figure out the derivative of ln of y without doing any, any work. 
You see why? Because it's the same curve. It's, it, it just looks, uh, it looks oddly, but it's exactly the same curve. Do you understand this idea, guys? I will show you another way to calculate it and you might go, oh, this is very simple, but it's only very simple because you do this mechanical, right? Uh, uh, this is training your mind to, uh, to see in perspectives. In fact, a theory of relativity is very difficult for that very reason. It's just a matter of describing uh, what, what, uh, what one sees that another sees. You see, I see that you see, and therefore I understand, you know, so it's that type of thing, which is very difficult. All right. So let's uh, stop the lecture here, guys. Again, I mentioned that I forgot that the due date of the exam is this Thursday and apparently it's the Thursday afterwards. I repeat, somebody did not believe. Uh, they think it's April 1st and they uh, texted me. One thing I, again, I ask you is do not post uh, anywhere the questions of the ex exam. It gets me very upset and it also wastes my time. If you do that, if you share, or if I think you cheated, I will interrogate you and uh, there will be very little mercy. I will just fail you for this exam, okay? If you have questions and something is difficult, I'm here to help. Do not uh, lie to me. Understood? It doesn't matter, it just bring the tests eventually so I can grade, grade it uh, on a Thursday that is not this one, good? In May 6th apparently, right? I forget, uh, May 8th I think is the day of victory. So I will stop 